Let's outline the harsh reality. You've spent a whole day shooting a video, you've been on location, you're sweating right now, and then you come home, you open the footage, and realize that it's all bad. The exposure is wrong, the focus is wrecked, the white balance is off the balance, so you are in trouble. Do you want to go and reshoot this thing? I guess not, but even if you really want to, it's always better to try and fix it in post-production. And fortunately, there are ways to improve your video in editing. My name is Arthur Weiner, this is the mobile view vlog and let's go and in fact all of us make technical mistakes all the time and skewed white balance is a common thing even among professionals not to mention the fact that you often have to work fast and with speed comes the risk of quality slips so if you shoot something wrong don't be scared We'll fix it now. Let's look at three possible scenarios with bad shots. So, the first uncomfortable situation you may have gotten yourself into. You notice something interesting. Got the camera out quickly, didn't check the settings, you don't have a stabilizer or extra light, and you end up with something like this. The video resolution is lower than you wanted, the white balance is off, the shot is shaky, the horizon is off, contrast and saturation have to be brought back too. It's sad, but at least we managed to shoot some action. So, the first, most unfortunate thing is that the video resolution is just small, even below full HD. So, I open Mobavi Unlimited and then the AI upscaling app to improve the quality of the video. This program increases the video resolution with minimal loss in quality using artificial intelligence. And all you have to do is drag and drop your video into the program and choose which resolution you want. I advise you to choose 4x to be sure, and if you look closely, you will notice that the image on the right is sharper and smoother. Then you just select the folder you want and press upscale. Great! That said, one problem less. It works very fast and of course we'll use Movavi Video Editor, so open it directly from Movavi Video Suite and drag and drop the footage to the timeline. By the way, you can get this app as well as the video editor and all the Movavi apps in general right now in one affordable and intuitive platform called Movavi Unlimited. So, so it includes video editing, photo editing, screen recording, file conversion, and a year's worth of unlimited access to Movavi's effects store. Best of all, even an average PC will be enough to get the job done. The main thing is to get started and you can learn how to work with the platform as you go along. Because this product is designed for both beginners and more advanced users. The one year subscription to Movavi Unlimited is now available at 85% off on the exclusive Movavi sale. So hit the link below to use this special offer from our secret page. And one of the main things that separates amateur shots from professional ones is the smoothness of the video. We didn't shoot here with the iPhone 14 Pro with the action mode, but with a small camera without any stabilizer at all. So the result is very weak. And by the way, a review of the iPhone 14 camera will soon be on the channel. Therefore, the first thing we'll do is to fix the shakiness of the video. In the left panel, go to the section with the tools and find the section stabilization. Click stabilize and I advise you to set the accuracy to maximum but keep in mind that this will affect the processing speed and if you have a slow computer it's better to reduce this value. I don't need too much shake correction here because it's not that bad so let's leave it around here. At the top you will see a small original and preview switch. Click preview and watch the magic. And also here the horizon is screwed up which you definitely can't leave so go to the tools click on crop and rotate and one beautiful slider shines in front of you which you need to move to the needed side. Align the vertical lines with something vertical in the shot and click apply. Let's tighten up the color a bit too. Open the color adjustments and go straight to the section with manual correction. Also on the right there is a section with lots but right now we don't need it because we want to fix the problems in detail not to stylize. We had a separate video about lots on our channel so make sure you check it out. In the meantime, first thing, let's fix the white balance. This is very easy to do. Find the temperature slider and move it in the right direction. In my case, here. And then it's pretty simple. We need to create depth. To do that, we lower the dark tones to make the shadows more black, but not too black so as not to eat up the details. And I would even tone down the highlights a bit so they don't get eaten up at the grading stage. Of course, I would raise the saturation as much as possible, but not too much. And to focus the viewer's attention, let's add a vignette. Go to the section with filters, category, vignettes. There are several types of vignettes here. I like 
like this channel one to just shade out the video on the sides. Drag the vignette onto the shot and you get a slight accent. So let's take a look at the shot before the correction and here after the correction. I don't think it's a shame to show it in the final video. So, the second one. We shot an awesome shot, but realized it was too dark. I'd say it's fixable. We erase the brightness of the video and notice that the video becomes kind of faded. To remove this fadedness, you need to increase the contrast, move the point to the right. The main thing is not to make the shadows black. If you see pure black, go back up. Pure black does not exist in nature. And also keep in mind that when recording video with low light, you will see a desaturated image. Why? Because less light means less color, but you can compensate for that with color correction. It's as simple as raising the saturation. And you should realize that by brightening a dark video, you are also brightening all the digital noise of the camera. Accordingly, if the video is too dark, you are unlikely to save it. Now we're talking about semi critical situations. So, the result. Next case. You were shooting a video in one room, then ran to another room, started shooting, but forgot to change the white balance and image profile in camera. And you end up with a blue or even purple picture. To fix this, we're interested in these three sliders, temperature, tint, and hue. In my case, I drag the slider to the right to make the video warmer and also tint towards green because it's kind of purple. And also the tone can be dragged to the left to adjust even more for the better. And while we're at it, let's throw on some LUT, like this one. And just like that, we have a beautiful video. I think it's clear about the image part, but also sound problems are also quite common as well. That hurts even more than video. Imagine recording a good sound on a great microphone, recording the whole script and then realizing at the end of the recording that the microphone was off the whole time. How painful is that? Basically, all you're left with is the sound going straight from camera. The mic gets everything around it, so you get a bunch of extra noise and a bunch of echo. To fix this noise, go to audio editing and you'll see lots of different audio correction tools. We're interested in noise removal and noise gate at the moment. Noise removal works quite simply. You have one slider in front of you. The higher the value, the stronger the noise removal. I leave it somewhere here. Noise gate, on the other hand works a little differently. Threshold is used to set the level at which the gate will open. Noise gate attenuates signals that register below the threshold. Range is used to set the amount of attenuation to be applied to the signal when the gate is closed. Attack is used to define the length of time the gate takes to change from closed to fully open. It is basically the fade in duration. Release is used to define the length of time the gate takes to change from open to fully closed. It is the fade out duration. A fast release abruptly cuts off the sound, whereas a slower release smoothly attenuates the signal from open to closed, resulting in a slow fade out. If it sounds complicated, just experiment. Essentially, there are no universal values here. Somehow, there are those that work best for you. And along with these tools, I recommend using EQ because it helps you to accurately raise or lower some frequencies. If you don't want to bother, you can just choose one of the presets, they work quite well. The main thing to remember is that our voice is around the middle frequencies, when noise is usually in the highs. That is, to remove the noise, let's select the voice enhancement preset and lower the high frequencies a little lower. Also, if you hear a hum, lower the lower frequencies a bit. And at the end, throw in a compressor. There are similar parameters as a noise gate, but the global point is that you compress the sound of the entire track to about the same level, so you don't get any too loud or too quiet moments, everything sounds even and pleasant. And let's take a listen to what the sound was and what it has become. There are a lot of different effects on social media nowadays. Some of them are pretty simple, but some... And I remind you that the one-year subscription to Movavi Unlimited is now available at 85% off on the exclusive Movavi sale. Hit the link below to use this special offer from our secret page. And if you want to find out more about editing in Movavi, click on these videos, like this one if it was helpful to you and see you in the next one.